Good evening, dear friends. Glad to welcome you to your YouTube receivers. Bon appetit to everyone who is eating. Well, finally, we have reached our lower limbs. We talked about the head, the back, but now it's time for us to learn all the secrets about our foot, why various problems arise with it. And today, we will find out why we have such a deformation of the foot with the formation of a bump on the big toe and what to do with it. The most effective exercises on how to restore, why it actually develops. The main reason isn't solely in the foot itself. As it turned out, as Schumerlinski scientists found out at the Institute for the Study of the Big Toe. So friends, let's start with the so-called pathogenesis. What happens in general in the formation of such a deformation when our big toe on the foot changes its position and starts to shift inward? And this joint deforms and the metatarsal bone called the first changes its position, shifts slightly outward. The transverse arch of the foot flattens disappears, becomes flat. Several main muscles are involved in the formation of this process. This is the long extensor of the thumb. See how I kindly provided all the muscles schematically, like the real ones. This long extensor of the thumb, it attaches to the very last phalanx of the thumb. The short extensor of the thumb, it goes here and attaches to the first phalanx. As you may have noticed, the big toe has two phalanges, and it turns out the hand also has two. And the third muscle is the muscle that abducts the big toe. It abducts it to the side like this. That is, it makes this kind of movement to the side, precisely preventing it from shifting inward like this. What happens to us? How exactly these muscles affect the movement of the thumb itself? If the short extensor of the thumb is working, our thumb lifts all the way up here. If the long extensor of the thumb is working, it also lifts up, but the first phalanx of the thumb is more involved. And the abductor muscle, it moves the thumb outwards like this, making this outward movement, not allowing the thumb to shift inwards here. But all of you, of course, understand that footwear plays a big role in shaping this process. That is, if you have footwear that squeezes your toes, it's obvious nothing good will result. Interestingly, it doesn't affect everyone. Some people who wear such shoes all their life do not develop anything like this. What matters more is the actual load that is distributed on the foot. And during movement, we can rely more on the outer edge of the foot, on the inner edge of the foot, on the back of the foot, on the front of the foot. And depending on the position in which the knee will move, that is, if the knee joint, the knee itself, it will move towards the big toe, the weight will be on the big toe. If it will move in the direction of the little toe, the weight will be more on the outer part of the foot. You can start with such a test. Find a step somewhere and put your foot on the step. And the first movement you will be doing to climb up the step, your knee will go forward. And here, for people who either already have this ring or are at risk of its formation, their knee will shift inward. Or the foot will initially stand at an angle like this, and the knee will go forward. It will be noticeable on the step how your knee moves when you shift your weight onto your foot. How it will go towards the big toe, towards the middle of the foot, or towards the little toe for some. But this is rare. This movement greatly affects the load on which part of the foot you will rely on. Why do some people experience excessive load on this inner part of the foot? This joint gets overloaded. This is related, as established by nuclear scientists at the Institute for the Study of Movement and the Formation of Parallel Relationships Between Muscles and Fascia. This occurs due to limited mobility between the chest and the pelvis. So here's a test, another test. 
Make a turn and pay attention. Does your pelvis participate in this turn? Knees and feet. If mobility is limited between the pelvis and the chest, then along with the shoulders, your pelvis will also turn. If mobility is limited, then the knees will turn like this. If you help yourself with your legs during the turn, help with your knee, the load automatically shifts to your big toe. The same thing happens with every step you take. That is, during the step, your back foot starts to make this kind of movement. The knee starts to go inward and you are always relying only on your big toe and even more on the outer part of your big toe. You make a push and at the same time, this joint is excessively overloaded. This is the pathogenesis. That is, not only does it participate, it not only affects the foot itself, the muscles of the foot and the shin, but also everything that is located above has a great influence. So, what to do with this, friends? We have several muscles, and first of all, we need to restore the function of the long extensor of the thumb, because it usually weakens. Remove the load from the short extensor of the thumb and restore the function of the muscle that abducts the thumb. To do this, first we need to find these muscles with our hands. To find the long extensor of the thumb, Take your foot, place it in front of you, pull your thumb up and find the tendon. Put your hand here, where you have your ankle joint, big toe, pull all your toes up. Here you will have two strong tendons. One tendon is the anterior tibial muscle and right behind it is the tendon of the long extensor of the big toe. You move your fingers up the tendon and find the muscle itself and find painful points in it. There can be a lot of them here. Attach the muscle itself to the fibula and you start working this muscle. First you do it with your fingers and then you can use a ball. To work this muscle you can also do it with a ball. How with a ball? You take it like this, you lie down. You put it here like this and lie on the ball. You can even do this on the move. And in this way, you will work out the front surface of the shin. Found a painful spot, held it. Just lie down, rest, place the other leg on top for weight. If it's not too painful, you can even help yourself with the other hand. In this way, you need to remove all the painful areas of this muscle itself. Next is the muscle that extends the big toe. It's located on the inner part of the foot right here. You can reach it with a ball. If you step on the ball with your foot, right with this part, that is, first walk through all these areas. Find the painful points there. You can do the same with your hands, fingers. Work through all these places. Where you found the painful point, stay there longer, hold it. You can just find the painful point and hold it like this with your finger. When you can't press with your finger anymore, that's when you start with the ball. It's here, down to the heel. There may even be more painful areas around the heel. These two muscles here, you need to first restore them. Remove all the pain so they can fully function for you. That is, these muscles themselves, they can be trained separately. There are special exercises for them. But in principle, during walking, if you have put them in order, they will participate more or less fully for you. And most importantly, to restore mobility between the pelvis and the chest, we need to do this exercise with you. In order to increase mobility between the chest and the pelvis, we take a roller like this, put it here, where the sacrum is, so that our pelvis remains fixed and we start to turn. We make a turn in one direction and make a turn in the other direction. Reach for this roller with your hand. Here you may find that you have a larger turn in one direction and a smaller turn in the other direction. First, you will develop mobility in this way, just standing in place, and then you get into the step position. You put your back foot on its toes, just place your front foot like this and start making a turn. If your right foot is behind, you move your right shoulder forward to make it go. And you train this movement so that your foot doesn't collapse inward during the step. You train this movement, put the other foot forward, and make this movement here. 
So this movement is most useful for those who have a problem with the bunions because there are a lot of exercises to train all these muscles. There are a lot of them on the internet, but unfortunately, they haven't really helped anyone yet because you can train these muscles forever. But if your foot collapses into the inner arch with every movement, all these muscles will constantly be overloaded. Well, friends, let's get to work. Train until the next broadcast.